as you can see, our tomato patch is really filled in. The fruits are setting and we're enjoying having some ripe tomatoes for once. Well, there are some big differences here among the tomato varieties that you can see. The basic difference is that some varieties are what we call determinant and others are indeterminate. And if that's a term that's foreign to you, now's a good time to learn what the difference is. Determinant tomatoes set all their fruit at just about the same time. And a lot of commercial varieties that are grown for canneries and such are what we call determinant tomatoes. And as you can see, most all the fruits have been set and they're staying right at about the same height. Now back behind me are some that might be more familiar to you. These are indeterminate types usually get much taller, they'll continue flowering and setting fruit throughout the summertime. And these are on a trellis that's at about four and a half feet tall. And so we'll continue pruning and tying these through the summer to make sure that they don't overgrow the trellis. In fact, this morning I went through and cut them back some and trimmed back some side shoots. Don't be afraid to prune on tomatoes, they'll be just fine. Now if you find that you want to rejuvenate some of your tomatoes this summer, if the insect pressure gets too high, spider mites take them, if diseases become a problem, you can either prune your tomatoes back by one third and fertilize them. That will rejuvenate new growth for fall. Or you can root the suckers. And here's a good example of the difference between a tomato sucker and a regular tomato leaf. A regular tomato leaf has no growing point out at the tip of it. It's just one full leaflet of individual leaves. A tomato sucker comes out right in what we call the leaf axle, and it has a little growing point. It's going to continue getting larger and larger. This is the part that you can just simply snap off, or you can use a knife, and you can trim that up and root that in either perlite or sand, some people even root them in water, and that will root a new tomato plant. You can rejuvenate that for the fall. Or pick a variety from your neighbors that you may not have, take some root suckers from there, and have new varieties for fall tomatoes. So we also probably ought to look at a few of the physiological environmental problems that may be showing up in the tomato gardens. And I know you may have some of this happening in your garden. You kind of wonder what the deal is, and is it going to be OK? Probably one of the things that you've already seen in your garden is some misshapen fruit, either as they begin to ripen or maybe even just before. And this is simply a condition referred to oftentimes as cat facing. I've pulled one off of our plant here to show you. You may see this in a variety of shapes or forms. Uh, it may be a very, very distorted look to the fruit or maybe just simply a, a sunken in spot such as this. This cat facing or deformed fruit is simply nothing more than a result of incomplete fertilization of the flower, or I should say uh, the pollination was not completed of this complete flower earlier in the season, and so as a result it caused this misshapen fruit, probably because of low temperatures or maybe some other weather condition. And this is going to straighten up, uh, generally it's only on, only on the first fruit of the season, and as our season progresses you won't have that problem. It certainly doesn't affect the edibility of this fruit. It does affect the quality of the fruit if you're trying to use this for sale purposes or uh, if you're concerned about the beauty of the fruit. Another condition that we're seeing uh, begin to show up here in Oklahoma now is sun skull. On this plant, and as you notice, this is one of the plants Sue was talking about that was indeterminate variety, and because it is small and we have uh, sparse foliage on it, we're probably going to have sun skull more prevalent. But the sun skull is just beginning to show up here. Here it's in a more advanced stage. One of the ways, of course, to prevent this is to uh, either shade the tomato with the cheesecloth or some kind of shading material, or be sure that you maintain a good foliage uh, canopy on this fruit to help protect the fruit somewhat from sun scald. Then another problem we've got that is physiological in nature and also is caused somewhat by environmental conditions is a condition known as leaf roll. Fortunately, leaf roll is not too uh, uh, advanced here on our tomatoes in the garden, not nearly as, as advanced as I have seen on some of the gardens here in Oklahoma and have heard about. But here, leaf roll is where the, the leaf turns up from the, uh, or rolls up with the bottom portion of the leaf beginning to be exposed and the leaf just sort of cupping over. We call this rolling up in somewhat of a cigar fashion. Sometimes you may see the entire plant just really roll up tightly like this. We find that leaf roll generally is a result of uh, maybe some 
heavy, heavy moisture conditions. It is a, a lot of rain that we've had lately, followed by some very high temperatures. We also find that this occurs generally more on tomatoes that have been pruned rather heavily. And again, there's not much damage to the plants, except it may contribute, of course, to sun scald, but then all, because the tomatoes are more exposed. But generally, as the season progresses, this also straightens out, so we generally don't worry too much about it. And Sue, I think you're going to talk a little bit about some variety differences also. In the short time we have left, I want to show you the varieties of tomatoes we're growing in our garden this summer. This is Bell Star. It's a delicious canning tomato. It's a release from Johnny Seeds up in Maine. Should do real well for us. This is Early Girl, and always one of the first tomatoes in the garden, and it consistently produces for us. Carnival is one that we've been very pleased with. It's a variety from Porter Seeds down in Texas, and is very disease resistant and has heavy fruit set. Back here is Carmelo, and that's a variety we grew last fall in the garden, taking suckers from Jim Gallet's garden and growing here. We had tomatoes clear up to November. Right here is Sweet Million, which is an improvement on Sweet 100 variety. Should give us plenty of cherry tomatoes. And then this is Summer Flavor 2000. It's a commercial variety, very, very determinate, but it has given us some nice early fruits. Back here is Big Early a good large early variety and then this is early pick and look at that no core just solid meat all the way through well you enjoy your tomato harvest this season and we'll see you next week on oklahoma gardening